You may have heard the story of the man who gets a call from his doctor who says, sit down because I have bad news and worse news. And the man sits down and the doctor says, test results are in, you have 24 hours to live. And the man says, what could possibly be worse than that? And the doctor says, I've been trying to call you since yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, I have some bad news and worse news. Bad news, you have to listen to me for eight minutes. Worst news, they are a Jewish eight minutes. <laughs> which, means, which means, Madam President, no need to congratulate you on the end of your term. This term is going to be significantly extended. And uh, I thank you very much for having me this evening. I knew it wouldn't take too long before I heard in this debate that the Jews were suddenly responsible for the barbarity and the atrocities of the Iranian regime. To compare Israel to a country that stones women to death on the accusations of their husbands who wish to divorce them, where the onus is on the woman, on the woman, to prove that she has not been unfaithful, is a blood libel. To compare Israel to a country where gays are stoned to death and hung from cranes in the street, including two this past Sunday. To compare Israel to a country where minors who engage in same-sex relationships are given the leniency of 87 lashes is to lose one's moral compass. But the truth is that the threat of Iran as a wolf in wolf's clothing to the security and the peace of the world is not just to the Jewish people. You see, we Jews have always been the canary in the coal mine. When Hitler passed his racial laws in Nuremberg in 1934, and it was a Jewish problem, there was only one man in these British Isles who saw that it was a British problem. He knew that the Western civilized world would pay a price for Hitler's anti-Semitism. And how many young British men and women never came home because they did not heed Churchill, Churchill's warning that barbarism must be stopped and checked. So let us examine whether Iran is a civilized nation or whether it is an abomination to Islam. My father and his family have been in Iran until my father left in the 50s for two and a half thousand years since Cyrus the Great took in the Jews and gave a commandment to allow the Jewish temple to be rebuilt. Islam allowed us Jews to live, albeit as second class citizens, but in relative peace and we are grateful till this very day. Is, Islam, is Iran a proper representative of Islam? Does Islam not believe in the infinite dignity of the human person? And yet I sat 10 feet from Hassan Rouhani at Davos at the World Economic Forum, where he said that he was democratically elected, even though 687 candidates were turned down, while six were allowed. That's not a democracy. That's an insult to the intelligence. And he made that statement to Nobel Prize winners who sat in front of him. He went on to say that Iran condemns terrorism. And he tweeted for three days before Davos about how they oppose any kind of targeting of civilians. What an insult again to the intelligence. Iran, according to the United States State Department and countless other sources, is the world's foremost fomenter of international terror. They paid for Hezbollah. You know what Hezbollah does? They don't just blow up Jews and Israelis. They killed. 250 American innocent soldiers who just went to help the Lebanese people, Arabs, out of the civil war in 1983. They killed 58 French soldiers who were there for the same reason. They blew up a JCC, a Jewish community center in Buenos Aires, paid for by Iran. God Almighty, yesterday Israel intercepted a ship going to Hamas filled with Iranian weapons designed to maim, slaughter, and kill children on buses and in nurseries. These are in combatants. This should be condemned by anyone who calls himself civilized, especially Muslims who are part of a glorious tradition and a world-renowned faith. They could never be a party to such atrocities. No person, I'm a religious man. If this, if Iran represented Judaism, I would be ashamed because I want my religion to be respected by the world rather than condemned. Rouhani went on to say in the same, in the same speech, that Syria was a humanitarian disaster. This is all I witnessed. I sat right in front of him. I sat directly behind 
Iran's foreign minister and Catherine Ashton, the EU foreign minister. He said, Syria's humanitarian disaster, the world has to do something to stop it. My friends, you think this is about apartheid in Israel, Syria? Let me tell you something, 150,000 Arabs, Arabs, not Jews, have died in Syria. The world couldn't give one flipping damn, nothing, nothing. And you know who's allowing it? Two countries, Russia, who has now invaded the Ukraine, because you can't stop aggression, and Iran. I'm not talking about the tens of millions of dollars that Iran has poured into the coffers of the arch butcher Assad to slaughter Arab children, to gas them in front of the eyes of the world. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about CBS News sending in producers with cameras and taking pictures, video that aired in the United States of the Iranian Revolutionary Guard actually fighting for Assad to slaughter Arabs, to gas Arab children. My friends, when my people were gassed at Auschwitz, Majdanek, Gross Rosen, Bergen Belsen, the world said nothing. But we didn't have Twitter and Facebook and everything else that was mentioned by the opposition. But we have it today. We know that 500 Arab children were gassed by the Syrians. The world saw it. The United States promised retribution. It was facilitated by Iran, who sent Hezbollah to fight for Assad to kill more Arabs, to kill more Muslims. And the world did absolutely nothing. I asked the members of the opposition, you have an issue with Israel going after scientists. First of all, you know how shred of evidence they already did that. But let's say they did. That was going to be my point of information. I thought I asked very, very, uh, in a very friendly manner. Not a shred of evidence, but let's say, let's say it's true. Do you know what Britain did to ball bearings factories and tank factories during the Second World War? To the people who worked there, they blew them to smithereens. When you have Ahmadinejad getting up every day and saying, we are going to annihilate Israel, slaughter Israel, destroy Israel, incinerate Israel, and when you're a nation that has kind of had that happen just like six decades ago, you get a little bit paranoid. And remember what the great American baseball player Yogi Berra said, just because you're paranoid doesn't mean they're not out to get you. <laughs> <laughs> and would it work? that Hassan Rouhani had repudiated any of this. He could have done the Davos, he could have said Ahmadinejad is a nutcase. He didn't say it, in fact, he marched in, 2000, in uh, November 2013 at a, at a military march that called for Israel's annihilation. But look at that. All you have to do is look at Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, the true power in Iran, who chooses the candidates, who said in November that Zionist Jews are rabid dogs who will face extinction and annihilation. My friends, if any Jew spoke this way, I would object. Because I pride myself, not on always being right, God knows I'm fallible, but feel free to disagree. <laughs> God knows that I try to be civilized, and this is about civilized behavior. Religion has a bad enough name in our time. Let me conclude by saying, this is a bit of a homecoming for me, and I thank Paulina for inviting me. I was the rabbi to the students here at Oxford between 1988 and 1999. I see many friendly faces here. I saw religion decline in, in, in England in general, and Oxford in particular. You could land 747 jets in the, in the college cathedrals here at Oxford. They're empty. Religion has no hold on people today. They've given up on it. And one reason, the principal reason, is they see all this ugliness in the name of God, and there's no one wearing a yarmulke or an imam to stand up and say, in the name of God, stop! In the name of God, stop building your nukes, Iran. You have 10% of the world's proven reserves. You need this like I need a pork sandwich. Just <laughs> stop.